Why Samsung's mobile division is failing. Find the best Android phone for you. And Showtime launches a streaming service. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 375 for Tuesday, July 7th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price, because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash TN2 and enter the promo code TN2. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Let's get to today's big news. Samsung released second quarter earnings estimates this morning, which included significant drops in revenue and profits due in part to supply shortages that throttled sales of the Galaxy S6 Edge smartphone. Here to talk about the Samsung story and to give us her picks for the best Android phone you can buy right now is Florence Ion, staff writer at GreenBot and PC World. Welcome, Florence. Hello, thanks for having me. Well, it's great to have you. This is your first time on the show with me. I know you've been on before to talk about yeah. Android stuff with uh, Sarah Lane, and you have uh, talked about Android stuff on uh, All About Android with Jason Howell. So I am excited to talk about Android stuff, mostly the Samsung story. Uh, do you have any ideas why the S6 Edge was in such short supply? Did they underestimate the demand? Uh, I think they did, and frankly, I underestimated it too. I didn't think that... Uh, the Edge was going to be as popular as it was going to be or as, as popular as people wanted it. So I think Samsung just expected flat phone. Everyone's going to want it. That's what they're used to. But, you know, to their surprise, that was not the case. And so what do these numbers estimates mean for Samsung? I think it means really good news for, I think it's good news for Samsung. It means that they're a really strong brand. Uh, they're still a really strong brand in the Android sphere. And I also think that it's showing that consumers want something a little different. Um, I, you know, I was impressed with the Edge. I liked it. I didn't like it as much as the gal regular Galaxy S6, but after some time, it really does grow on you. I mean, it's it's just a nicer phone to look at overall. So I have one here. It's not mine. It's Jason Howells. It's uh, so the curve. I mean, Jason Clancy, sorry, our uh, producer, um, the curved screen. That was what was in demand. Like that was what they couldn't keep yeah. up with. Yeah, I, I can't believe it either, actually, because I was totally not into it when I first saw it. And now I'm like, wow, this is actually really nice. And whenever I show it off to people, they're always like, oh, that's actually pretty cool. I wish my iPhone had that little curve. <laughs> That's exactly what Samsung wants to hear. I wish my iPhone exactly. had blank. <laughs> so, exactly. So what 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 were the problems? I mean, is the cost too high uh, for the market? I mean, is that where they're being squeezed out and like, you know, by cheaper models like Xiaomi's and other low-end models? I don't think so. Well, okay. So it depends on the market, right? Because overseas, you Samsung does have a lot of competition from Xiaomi and Huawei and other Chinese manufacturers that are coming in, selling cheaper phones with more, you know, uh, premium features for a better price, frankly. But here in the U.S., it's a different ball game. I mean, the carriers rule the world here. And who have the carriers been advertising? They've been advertising Samsung phones mostly. Um, I've been seeing LG here and there, but you know, Samsung's pretty much the one that's been taking over the airwaves as, you know, cliche as that might sound. <laughs> so, so you've reviewed the S6 and the S6 Edge, uh, and you called them the best all around phones. Uh, why do you like them? Uh, they're just, uh, I think that they encompass everything you want in a flagship. Um, they have wonderful cameras, wonderful screens, really good battery life, um, they, they look really nice. They're nice to hold. They fit in all of my bags. Uh, they're not, you know, overpowering by this, by have, you know, being huge, like the Nexus six, for instance. Um, and it's just a good, uh, a nice little package for what you're paying for. And what are the main differences between the two, the edge and the other, is it just the curved screen or are there other differences? It's, it's pretty much the curved screen, slightly bigger battery, on the S6 Edge, but quite honestly, that doesn't, uh, it's not much of a difference in battery time. And is, so. the price, is the price much different between the two? I believe it's still a hundred bucks more for the Edge than the flat GS6, um, which is surprising that it's such, it's so in demand because I thought 
oh, hundred dollars. Nobody's going to want that. That's more money. But then I guess let's look at the iPhones, right? People want to get the the bigger ones. So they're going to pay more money to get, you know, more space or, or whatever you want from the iPhone. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I am an iPhone user, but uh, my daughter is an Android user. She has the Galaxy S5. It has a removable battery, an SD card, um, and uh, we have. she has found that very useful for a lot of different things. Uh, but the S6 doesn't come with the removable battery or the SD card. Why? Well, the answer is that uh, I believe the answer from Samsung would be that couldn't really fit in all this stuff into a beautiful glass and metal body uh, that you wanted because the Galaxy S6 Active actually has a bigger battery pack um, because it's bigger. So they can actually fit that in there. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't put in the removable uh, micro SD slot. I know that that bummed a lot of people out and that's kind of why, you know, the LG G4 has come back into the spotlight because it has a removable battery. It has the expansion slot, but I don't know. I, I've been using the GS6 Edge and I'm not really missing it. So I think it depends on the user. So have you have done any testing with these phones against the iPhone? Yes, I have actually. Uh, I tested the camera on the Galaxy S6 against the iPhone. Uh, the very minute that I got it in the mail, I took it out of the box and I went around San Francisco just snapping photos. We, I took it in our lab and I tested it. Um, I also tested the LG G4 against uh, the GS6 so that there, you know, I could kind of see the big Android player and I could see the big, you know, Apple phone, how they all competed against one another. And so better photos, you say, with the... I would say the Galaxy S6 does take much better photos than the iPhone, yes. Yes, it does. (laughs) The iPhone is, the iPhone has slightly, like, slightly better color composition, but it depends on, like, the lighting situation. Yeah, whether you're outside or inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, So what have you heard about the Galaxy Note 5? I have not. uh, The thing about rumors is that there's a lot of them and a lot of them are really out of this world and just like, I cannot believe this is being posted. And I feel like because we're nearing that time where it's almost like a year, the Note 4 has been out, it's time for a new one. Um, Rumors are kind of coming out just to build the buzz around the product. I think the best rumor I've heard so far is just how it's going to look, that it's going to look like a bigger version of the GS6, and I am excited for that. And I think it's, um, I think that Samsung might do the same thing it did with the Galaxy S6, so have like a curved edge version and have the regular version, but we'll see. So what's the best Android phone for someone to buy right now who's mainly interested in taking great photos? So for great photos, I maintain that the LG G4 is the best one for that. I think people are really going to like it too because it still has a removable battery pack and it has the expansion slot. And that's really important when it comes to taking smartphone, uh, doing smartphone photography these days because the higher resolution the camera sensor is, the higher, you know, the more megabytes the photos are going to take, right? So... Um, the expansion slot really comes in handy there, but also just color composition, the ability to, uh, shoot in raw and JPEG if you want to, um, just everything about the G4 was really surprising to me. Just the camera quality. I wasn't expecting it to be that good, but it, it kind of knocked the GS6 out of the park a little bit. So, so what's, let's say I'm on a budget. What's the best phone for me? The best Android phone. Uh, It's still the Moto G. Still the Moto G. If you want to go even lower, you could do the Moto E. But the Moto G under $200 is still a good package. Um, I think we're hearing rumors that Moto might refresh that line, but it's fall. We'll see what happens. So it sounds like you have a lot of access to different Android phones to test and try out. Um, Which one do you choose as your main phone? Which one are you using right now? Uh, I think you're going to laugh. I'm actually using a gold Galaxy S6 Edge. Um, I actually bought one. <laughs> so With your own money. With my own money. <laughs> and it was not in... Actually, I had to wait two weeks for it to come. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I'm using a gold phone. I know it's always yeah. g- g- helpful for tech reporters to say, like, you know, because it's different if you paid for it or if they send it to you. But uh, that was the one that you chose your hard-earned money. Yeah, I wanted a gold one. And um, my Macworld colleagues always make comments about how nice it looks with the edge. <laughs> it <laughs> so, does look. It is very it pretty. It looks super nice in person. So 
<laughs> right. And maybe it's like you were saying with the watch, you, you know, use, you know, different watches depending on what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. Like maybe, you know, since you have the access to their phones. The could, gold you know. fits in with my overall aesthetic, I think. Um, that is something that's important to me. And I think we're seeing that from other Android smartphones coming out too. I'll swap a little back. So on the G4, different color, you know, types that everything comes in. So... Well, Florence, thank you so much. It was great to talk to you. Florence Ion is a writer at Greenbot, uh, and she are, uh, remind me of your Twitter handle. Oh, that flow. <laughs> that flow oh, that on Twitter. Flow. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on. Take care. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Coming up, Apple hints at bringing back home sharing, and Google's self-driving cars hit the Lone Star State. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Casper. Casper is an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the cost. I love my Casper mattress. I've been sleeping on it for four months, and I don't think I will ever buy a different kind of mattress. It just feels that good. I like the way they're able to cut costs of dealing with resellers and showrooms so they can pass the savings directly on to me and to you. Casper uses two technologies, latex and memory foam, to make a comfortable mattress that has just the right sink and bounce. A Casper mattress provides long-lasting comfort and support, and you can buy it easily online without ever leaving your house because sometimes we just don't feel like leaving our house. If you want to try it out first, you might ask, how can I do that? You can. Casper offers free delivery and painless returns with a 100-day period. I don't think you'll even need the 100 days, but it's a lot better than just lying down in a showroom, which tells you almost nothing and can be a little bit awkward sometimes. Casper mattresses cost $500 for a twin, $950 for a king size. You can save an additional $50 just because you watch or listen to this show. Go to casper.com slash TN2 and enter the promo code TN2. On to a few more stories we're following today. Apple's streaming service, Apple Music, is officially a week old today. And I think it's fair to say that the verdict is not in yet. Some hate it, some love it, some rave about its simplicity. Others say it is way too complicated. One thing that I've heard a lot of complaints about is the fact that when the company gave us Apple Music, they also took away home sharing. Home sharing is the iTunes feature that allowed you to use your Apple ID to stream your music library from your Mac to up to five other Mac iOS devices or Apple TVs on your local network. Now, according to Ars Technica, Apple senior vice president and dad dancer Eddie Q is working to bring home sharing back in iOS 9. Currently, home sharing still works in iTunes 12.2 and on the Apple TV. iOS 9 is due out this fall. Earlier this summer, we reported that Showtime planned to launch a $10.99 per month standalone streaming service for the web, Apple TV, iOS, Roku, and PlayStation View. Today, Recode reports that the service is now live on Apple TV with other devices soon to follow. And the next web says that Facebook is testing floating videos. That's a feature that will give you the ability to watch those videos of goats in pajamas while you scroll through the rest of your Facebook feed because our attention spans are tiny. Some Facebook users reported an icon next to the video icon on videos that when you when clicked, this creates a movable video window. When I checked this afternoon, I didn't have the button to play a floating video. Did you? If you did, email me at Megan at twit.tv. Tell me about it. In other Facebook icon news, Caitlin Winner, a design manager at Facebook, has a post up on Medium today about the new Facebook friends icon. It now features a woman with my exact haircut. It's only her silhouette, but I think it's my haircut. Don't you? I think it is. Uh, she has somehow also managed to shoulder her way in front of the man. The darker blue icon is the new one. And I like it. Finally, today autonomous today in autonomous driving news, CNET reports that Google's self-driving cars program has gone on a road trip to Austin, Texas. That's right. CNET spotted a Google Plus post assuring everyone that one of Google's self-driving Lexus SUVs was intentionally driving in Austin and did not get lost on the way home in Mountain View. Google says the car will be driving a few square miles north and northeast of downtown Austin with safety drivers aboard. Of course, if you live in Austin and you've spotted a self-driving car, take a photo and send it to me at megan at twit.tv. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2. You can write to all of us at tn2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.